Okay, I'm at the uh, Los Angeles Asian Pacific Film Festival, and we're talking about the movie The Last Tour, and I'm with... I'm uh, Diana Lee in El Santo, and I play Lily, and I'm also one of the co-producers and part of the stunt team as well. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Yu, director, actor, and I uh, did some producing. Okay. I'm Franz Elisander Schmelkes, I play Fonzie, and uh, I'm, al I'm also the producer of the film. Okay. Hey, I'm Liz Ho, I'm one of the actors. Okay, so it sounds like you're all... Uh, Deeply involved, not just from the acting standpoint, but uh, so uh, how does it feel to be part of the Los Angeles Asian Pacific Film Festival? Oh, this is a huge honor for us. Uh, a lot of us have grown up kind of coming here and watching other films, and to actually have a feature in it is, is kind of like watching the Lakers and then being a Laker yourself. <laughs> so tell, tell me about the story of uh, the last tour. Um, it's it's a, a down and out soldier who can't feed his family, and he takes this really low rent mercenary job guarding a prisoner in a hotel, and then everything goes horrendously wrong. Um, at one point, they end up out in, in in a desert canyon, pursued by many nefarious individuals, and they end up with their survivalist aunt and uncle. Mm -hmm. So it looks like a uh, kind of an adventure, well, an action adventure thriller, but it feels like a lot like El Mariachi. Um, that, that kind like of style. Cohen, it's like the Coen Brothers. Mm -hmm. It's very quirky. We also have action and comedy. There's something for everyone, but honestly, it's more Coen Brothers-esque. That's how we've been really yeah. identifying it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, how did the story come about that? It's, you know, it's, it's got to start somewhere. It's because usually these things come from a weird place. Well, yeah, <laughs> yes. considering <laughs> what's going on right now with the, in the press with Korea, I love that it's about the kidnapping of... Of a, a, a Korean... Um, in, in Korea, there, there are companies called Chebbles. They're the, the big corporation, Samsung, Hyundai, you know, and they have trillions of dollars, and, and, and they're, they're basically family dynasties, and so it's about the kidnapping of the son of, of, of one, the, the first son of one of the big Chebul companies. Okay. Um, but um, it, it came from a place, uh, this was really inspired by my, my love for my, my friends. Um, uh, we're all friends here, we've all been friends for a long time, and you know, like, I think there are very few people who were actually brought in who weren't, you know, part of our, our, our group for a long time. And um, I, I, I was... Uh, one of my friends is, is a, a, a soldier, he's a combat controller, and um, when he went into war, he had this attitude, and it really amazed me, where he was like, I really want to put myself between those I love in harm's way, and he really meant it, it wasn't a slogan, it was like real, and, and I just thought, w what someone who had heart like that, because I've had other friends who come back from the military very embittered, and, and I wondered what would happen to him, and how he could be transformed, and how he could be resurrected, and then I had all these like really, really talented friends who were being completely overlooked by Hollywood. Diana here is is this strange mix of this like really sweet loving person and someone who could disembowel you with her left hand and and you know like it's this mix of danger and sweetness I thought we have to get this on film Hollywood is stupid for overlooking this I'm going to use this to my advantage Franz is uh, an actor I worked with we went to MIT together he was always a terrific actor. He worked with Augusto Boal. He's done all of these things. And a lot of his, his, his performances were really lauded. And then he had to go into a corporate route. He had to, like, you know, make money. Uh, he had to uh, solve a bunch of problems. And he wasn't able to kind of, like, fulfill that side. And we were at this point. We've been talking for years about making a movie. He's also a mechanical engineer. He has all of these skills. And so we were making this movie. And he creates the camera mount for our cameras, for our, our trucks from scratch, from boards. He, he rigged things in the desert for our special effects. He he uh, solved, we had this problem, we couldn't bring generators out into the desert. He solved that problem with a car battery and some low-power LED lights in his brain. I mean, it was, like, really incredible. And, like, and then Liz, we, um, I had first cast Liz um, in Shakespeare. She was doing Viola in Twelfth Night, and she was brilliant. And it, it's such a difficult role. You have to be the, the, the heroine, you have to be, you, you have to make everyone believe that the, everyone can fall in love with you, and at the same time, you're, you're doing some of the most beautiful poetry in Shakespeare, and that mix of qualities is really, really difficult. She nailed that, and we had to have her from this film. And after she read the script, she graciously said yes. So you're kind of thanks. So you're kind of the MacGyver of the, of the team. Uh, yes, so, so among other things, yeah, we, we had to MacGyver a lot of things on the set. I mean, we, we shot in the in, in the desert uh, in, in an area that we actually were not allowed to bring generators and many other things, and we had to solve. We, we shot at night. We 
we shot uh, we shot on uh, the summer day that was uh, the hottest day in uh, summer and then when we had to do pick up sh uh, shots we actually did them in the coldest day in the desert at night um, so we kind of had to solve all those things uh, in the desert so we had to do what we can and, and, and the great thing about independent filmmaking is that you have to be creative and you have to use the resources that you have in front of you right, and like uh, come the, up with it. It sounds like the film was very low budget. Uh, Absolutely and but but uh, when, when you go see it you'll see that it actually doesn't look like a low budget film so the trick was how do, how do you make a high budget film with very low budget and that's where really the creativity and we actually did apply a lot of uh, uh, you know techniques from even lean manufacturing principles that I, I, I've used all throughout my life to kind of really come up with the way to do it and it actually all begins with the script uh -huh. right uh, Ryan created a script based on the resources that we had available um, and uh, you know even even all the ideas of having action sequences and fight sequences that was based on, on the resources that we knew that Diana and Ron you know had those expertise and had the resources that we were able to do all these things Ron is my husband the stunt coordinator as well uh, this is Ron Balicki so and he also has a role in the film he plays Uncle Bob <laughs> And so there's a, uh, there, I guess, guerrilla filmmaking is the best way to, to describe it. Uh, just creating, I, I mean, that's, it seems like nowadays that's a lot easier to do than it was maybe five, ten years ago. I thought ours was more survivalist. <laughs> <laughs> the others do guerrilla. We did survivalist filmmaking. We were filming in 106 degree heat at 6 a.m. in the morning around scorpions and snakes. Not kidding you, no bathrooms for a woman. That was really hard. Um, so, yeah. So tell, tell me about your role in the film. Oh, gosh. Oh, she's a great role. She's a, a dual role, very, uh, which is perfect for me because I'm a Gemini. Um, she's very sweet, very kind, very loving, very family-oriented. But there's a side to her where she can kick ass and she can kill people. And uh, I would say, too, that's the same for her, the love of her life, Uncle Bob, played by my husband, Ron Balicki. And uh, they both are, are, are very yin and yang. And uh, they are, you know, looking for their best, uh, the best interest of their family, which is just played, you know, uh, for Mia, which is uh, Liz's character, and Ryan's character, which is uh, June. And you know, this is a family that comes together in this very quirky way, and uh, they they combatively um, survive. <laughs> So action, adventure, thriller, family. Film. Oh, yeah. But you know what's really cool about this film, too? It's also a very diverse film. I mean, yes, we're here at the Los Angeles Asian Pacific Film Festival, but the beautiful thing is, like, France is Hispanic. Uh, we had a lot of Caucasians on this film. We had uh, African American. We had a diverse cast, and I'm, I'm very proud of that. You know, we walk the walk of diversity, and that's very important. And I think we need to see more films like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, was, I guess I was talking to other people about the idea of culture. Cultivating talent, you know, it's uh, you know maybe we're not there yet as Asians, um, but you know, we don't necessarily have an Asian Spielberg yet. But but by giving people a chance, by by saying, hey, you do have talent, as opposed to saying, well, we're the Asian version of this, or we're the Asians. Mm -hmm. this. Right. I think that's very key because. I think one of the dangers, kind of maybe in our culture, we're so concerned with, you know, I think if you look at our roots, concerned with face, concerned with shame, concerned with the, those things, and even those of us who are very Asian American, I think we still have to deal with, with some of those twinges. And it's hard to kind of get up and fail the requisite number of times in order to be the next Spielberg. You know what I mean? Like, like all these people, Tarantino's first movie, historically awful, like literally the, guy, the, the, the agent who looked at it said, I'm going to do you a favor, don't ever show this to anyone again. He's one of the best. How do we get there? How do we be like George Clooney who did 23 pilots before ER, none of which got picked up, you know? Um, we have to like... We have to believe in ourselves. We have to be okay with going out there and making a couple stinkers and just, you know, like, like, like keep, keep going forward. And I'm very proud of everyone who took that lead in this movie. I mean, they kind of had to. They're my friends. Let's tell me about you, Ken. I play Mia. I play Ryan Yu's wife. Uh, it, it's a character that is dealing with hardships in family, uh, dealing with basically being a single mom with an absentee partner in the mix, and and seeing how how do we handle those kinds of relationships under stress um, while being you know put in some crazy circumstances. Um, but it's really fun. It's a great movie. It sounds like there's a lot of heart in the, in the film. There is, there is. I mean, we, we uh, Ryan and I had uh, had been looking for a project for some time, uh, and one of the things that we really liked about uh, this movie, that I liked about this movie, was that 
not only is it funny and it has a very interesting story, but it also has a very deep message uh, in, in the film that's actually carried throughout uh, the, the film and, uh, and, and throughout many characters as well. So it kind of also leaves you that feel-good uh, uh, sense when you see it as well. And then, since you guys are taking on Korea, do you change your email passwords a lot? Or? <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, we our, our, our sound post designer uh, basically put a dare out to North Korea because he actually used some of their actual propaganda oh. speeches in our, in our movie, and he was like, if they come after us, it'll be the best thing ever. Um, just kidding, don't bomb us. <laughs> Stay away from Instagram. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you